Hello, everyone. Let's talk about social inclusion one more time. Today, we talk about the experiences of young North African irregular migrants in Geneva, Switzerland. Today, my guest and I, Maxim Felder, um, we explore how they receive support from local organizations, how they make a sense of this support, and how it shapes their everyday, everyday lives. Uh, Maxim and I will also look at the challenges and the paradoxes of providing support to irregular migrants and what this means for uh, their inclusion in society. Maxim, welcome to our episode. Thank you for having me. Uh, your article begins by stating that uh, the inclusion of irregular migrants is a complex, of course, contested issue relevant to a significant number of people. I assume it's important exploring because... Well, there is no easy answer to this question of how to best include irregular migrants in society. No, of course. And I think like the, the case study that we have uh, at hand uh, provides a good, uh, good case uh, for showing different aspects of this complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By, by reading your article, I got under the impression that there is a lack of research on, on how cities provide support to irregular migrants. So was this the void that you wanted to fill? Um, yes, I mean, in my view, social scientists should not worry too much about uh, research gaps because it's always worth uh, revisiting uh, things that, that we think we already know. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of uh, filling a gap, uh, I would say that our research aimed at contributing to the broader debate on urban inclusion or uh, urban hospitality, depending on, on, uh, on how we frame it. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say there is a lack of research. What I would say is that most of the research I've read at least focuses on uh, on policies, and uh, and on on the different on the tensions between different levels of governance or, uh, of uh, irregular migration. And we take a slightly different approach here by looking at uh, the, the street level and uh, by confronting like the experience of one specific, very specific category of uh, irregular migrants and uh, the social workers uh, working with them uh, in, the, in the everyday life. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into it. What are the main findings or conclusions of your, of your article? Well, first, I could maybe um, uh, mention that uh, irregular migrants are not a social group. Uh, it's not a research uh, population uh, per se. It's a very heterogeneous uh, administrative category and even like within this legal or administrative categories there are important differences uh, with respect to for example who will be able in uh, uh, the years to come to uh, apply for regularization and who will be part from uh, from it uh, so in our research uh, which focused on more broadly on, uh, on different kinds of newcomers, not only irregular and not only from uh, North African countries, uh, we met a really wide range of, uh, of people. And uh, there is very little in common uh, between the, the young North African uh, featured in, in this article and say, uh, an irregular migrant woman who arrives by plane from Bogota and uh, works here and there as a cleaner and maybe eventually uh, will manage to, to regularize uh, her situation as a deserving worker. Uh, so irregular migrants, as you, as you guess, have very different backgrounds. They also arrive in very different contexts where their skills, their professional skills, but also language skills uh, will be more or less useful. They also arrive in uh, different health conditions uh, and the, their chances of finding a source of income, finding a place more broadly in the, in the city depends uh, on how their uh, social class, uh, their, their gender and their race intersect and race as a social construct, of course. So in the case of the people we are interested in here, uh, being a young male, uh, being Muslim, being of North African origin and from lower class, uh, lower, lower social class, uh, this puts them in, in a very unfavorable position among uh, irregular migrants who are already uh, in a quite unfavorable uh, position. And considering maybe your the specific group that you studied and well, also considering the complexity of the groups that you mentioned, let's look a bit. I would like you to explore potential policy impacts. 
Yes, so our aim was not to make recommendation, of course, but to contribute to uh, an understanding of what is going on. And uh, uh, we also want to fuel a, a discussion on what kind of hospitality or what kind of inclusion uh, is or should be given uh, to irregular migrants. So it is very important to talk about policies, as mm -hmm. our colleagues have, have done, um, and about how illegality is produced. Uh, but we think it's also uh, important to debate what, what is going on on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. what uh, uh, social workers uh, are doing, what should they do uh, when their task is receiving uh, people in precarious situations. So one uh, contribution of our article um, is uh, to focus uh, not on policies, but mm -hmm. about to, to talk about social work. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the topic of the, of the special issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we think it, it's necessary to, to discuss the following options. Uh, should uh, social work encourage uh, irregular migrants uh, to remain to autonomous, to, uh, to be mobile, uh, even if it means uh, kicking them out of the shelter in the morning? Or uh, should it adopt uh, what we call in, in this article a palliative approach? and uh, maybe refrain from, from trying to transform uh, these people's situation and instead letting them rest. Mm -hmm. And so research-wise, I assume, um, looking ahead, probably what we need is more uh, studies uh, on specific groups on the street level, as you said. So what should we turn our attentions to now? Well, I think uh, ethnography provides a nice way of... Uh, of uh, opening windows on 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 the world uh, the world of, um, of of these people and maybe I could uh, um, mention an anecdote that that goes back to the the beginning um, of the field work. Um, so I was in a reception center on on the, on the shores of um, of Lake Geneva in Switzerland, and uh, it is a so it's a beautiful old ship where. Uh, around like 200 uh, free breakfasts are served uh, every day to anyone who needs it. Uh, it's on weekdays only. And in those days uh, you had to get out before uh, half past nine. So around that time, social workers, a social worker asked uh, a man if he liked the breakfast. That day they, they had made uh, pancakes and he said, yes. And then he added, but you know, like I didn't come here uh, to eat. So you made it pancakes and it, it's cool, like we appreciate it, but we don't really care about pancakes. What are pancakes uh, when you don't have a job, when you have nothing to do because you don't have documents? Mm -hmm. So the first interpretation and, uh, and something that is uh, really widely documented in the literature is that this is the result of contradiction between the inclusionary approach by local and urban actors and the exclusionary approach by national and uh, supranational authorities mm -hmm. who restrict access to legal migration. Mm -hmm. And we agree with this interpretation, but by looking uh, at the ground level, we believe uh, that a paradox also exists in the ways in which assistance is organized and provided. Mm -hmm. And can you provide um, additional resources about the topic that was discussed today? Additional resources? I mean, we published another paper in uh, the sister journal. I don't know if that's a word. Um, urban planning mm -hmm. um, that uh, covers uh, other aspects of, uh, of this uh, contradiction mm -hmm. between hospitality and, and inhospitality. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also wrote one recently uh, um, in, in French. Okay, perfect. Um, Maxime, this episode has been straight in the point. I think uh, we have a great episode at hand. But if there was anything, uh, if you could wrap up this conversation in one or two sentences, what would it be? Um, okay, first, um, the inclusion uh, of irregular migrants in cities is indeed limited uh, by restrictive national uh, migration policies and supranational policies. But I think we have to acknowledge that this is also limited by uh, practical and symbolic aspects of how the assistance is organized. And maybe a second thing, if you allow me, uh, unconditional access uh, to resources uh, and to services 
including two irregular migrants, can be combined with high, uh, with high practical demands in terms of the ability to move from one place to another, to keep up with the schedule, what is open now, what will close when, and, and to maintain this space uh, over time, over weeks, maybe over months. And I think uh, these practical and, and temporal uh, aspects uh, deserve more attention in the inclusion debate. Perfect. Maxim, it was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, for the listeners who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources and uh, the study that served as base for this uh, conversation on the Let's Talk About Social Inclusion website. And you can also listen to this episode whenever you get your podcast, should you prefer an alternative type of content. Subscribe to our newsletter or follow us at Cogitatio LTA.